we talk about racism in healthcare, but we don't really associate racism and East Asian. We just see it as cultural incompatibility. I feel like the culture aspect, the word culture and diversity and inclusion kind of softens it up. It's a Eurocentric system that emphasizes speaking English and speaking this jargon of biomedical objectives. You are causing violence to people that don't fit into this model. It is racism. In my training in anthropology, we talk about culture a lot. When we talk about mental health or other things like that, it's a lot easier to talk about racism in the system when it's a black or brown community. We never will look white, so we will always look like a foreigner. So how does this perpetual foreigner idea get played out in the, in the system? It's very subtle. Like if you look at things that are published on racism and health, it's never about Asian Americans. There's also not a lot of Chinese Americans that end up going into psychiatry or social work. That's kind of like also the immigrant experience where you think about social mobility, you think about being a, a doctor, a lawyer, or engineer, but not, not, nothing, not a psychiatrist though, <laughs> because uh, you want to be a doctor, but nothing with mental health, because some of that stigma transfer over. Like, oh, why do you want to study crazy people? There's almost this invisibility there. During last summer, even discussions about race, like oftentimes, like we're kind of left out of it. That's why when you approached me about this project, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you want, you're interested in Chinese Im immigrants? There's this idea for a long time that if you, if you don't speak up and, you, and you're good and you go to school and you get education, you will be part of American society. But I think the last year with COVID and also the anti-Asian hate that's been arising, I think a lot of people started to realize staying quiet is not protecting them. Something happened. More conversations, especially second generation, children of immigrants, thinking like, okay, now we definitely have to stand up and speak up. Right now, I teach Asian American Studies at Hunter College. I also uh, lead the nonprofit Chinese American Family Alliance for Mental Health. CAFAM really does things that are it's very grassroots. It started about 18 years ago, and for the longest time, the organization was really just supported by volunteers, by bilingual and bicultural volunteers. When I came back to New York and I heard about this, like a support group, right? I'm like, oh my god, like. Chinese immigrants sharing their emotions? Like, we don't talk about our emotions. I know I do, and also my students also really struggle with this fact of like, we are hurting with this discrimination, but like, we're also afraid that like, we're decentering other communities of colors, but like, th there shouldn't be this kind of competition. It's just like, it should just be acknowledging that there is that pain there.